something called apartheid and in my lifetime I witnessed blacks and whites not being able to be together in South Africa Jamaica under the leadership of Norman Manley was the first country in the Western Hemisphere to declare, even before we were independent from Britain, that we would not trade with a country that had those kinds of restrictions on black people. It was a courageous step, but it was the right thing to do and it was a principled thing to do. Because of that, Jamaica, through international diplomacy and what we stood up for in the world, was recognized as the country that, despite our size, was prepared to stand up for persons who couldn't stand up for themselves, even when we didn't have our own rights and liberties in terms of independence from Britain. Subsequently, we had other issues to contend with. And so in the 1970s, when Michael Manley decided that he was now going to trade and have South-South cooperation with Africa and have a new international economic order with Africa. 
and countries in Africa. Kissinger visited here in 1976 to tell Michael Manley to stay out of Africa. When Cuba asked Jamaica in the 70s if their planes could fuel here to help fight the war in Angola for democracy, Jamaica said yes. Through our music, through our agitation, through our principled approaches, Jamaica has always been that country that has stood up as a beacon in the world for human rights and justice. Not interfering in people's political affairs, but the world knew where we stood. And that is perhaps why when Kenyatta was arrested in 1953, he called for a Jamaican to represent him by the name of Dudley Thompson, because the Pan-Africanist movement was, was a vibration in the world. Perhaps that is why when, when I got to South Africa in the early 90s, or, let me back up, there are two places when Nelson Mandela was freed that he had to visit first. First was Cuba, the other was Jamaica. And perhaps that is why when I got to South Africa, the Jamaicans were, the South Africans were very, very clear about Jamaica's role in their freedom with other countries as well. But they could speak about our music. They could speak about Bob Marley and the concert in Zimbabwe for freedom and for democracy. So I want Jamaican young people to understand that perhaps you are questioning why some of us are taking a stand for the freedom of our black brothers and sisters in other places when obviously we have issues here. It is because it's in our DNA. It is because it's who we are. It is because 100 years before full freedom, there was a woman who walked from Portland in the East to tell her brother in St. Elizabeth not to trust the British. That woman was Nanny and her brother was Kojo. And 100 years, regardless of what the history says and how it's written, there was a woman and a set of people in Jamaica who beat the British 100 years before full freedom in this country. It's who we are, it's in our DNA. And perhaps we need to find again that fervor to speak up for issues that threaten not only our mortality, but threaten our presence, because guess what? The history of America is built on black people. We can go to Starbucks in the United States and sit down. Our children can go to universities there. We can visit some of us if we choose to and feel free as Caribbean nationals because of the rioting. And so when we see persons over there fighting for their lives and fighting for their freedoms, around the world we have to coalesce regardless of where we are and say, yo brother, we're there with you. Because today for you, tomorrow for me. So it's a very, very interesting time that we're living in in the world. And sometimes the lid is taken off of situations to demonstrate exactly what has been in the underbelly. And people are angry, especially countries around the world, perhaps, that feel that the United States has interfered in their own affairs when all of this is happening in their country. I'm not going to get into that. What I want us to get into is who we are as Jamaicans those things that we stand up for in terms of our character, why it is that we are so respected around the world, it is because we've always stood up for on principle. We've always stood up for the underdog. We've always stood up for freedom, for liberty, for solidarity. And we've always been a revolutionary people. Our reggae music is revolutionary. It's inspiring. It, it breaks down dogma. It shatters propaganda. It keeps, it's a vanguard of making sure that people 
feel liberated and it carries you through the struggle. So for whatever else that we're all feeling at this point, because I have a, I, I have a son, you have children, we have relatives that live in the United States. The diaspora of Jamaica and the Caribbean and Africa all help to build that country and all help to build the UK. And their children, their grandchildren are there. So, you know, even if you, if you can't get out on the road, feel that spirit of solidarity and also feel the spirit here for children who are being raped, for mothers who are being abused, for every time a young man goes out there and for some reason, somebody just hears him gone down. When will it get to a point where enough is enough? I'm asking you to dig deep. Dig deep and remember the history of who we are as Jamaicans. Not segregating by virtue of whether we're in a geographical location or if we're in Jamaica but having the same constructs and concepts and understanding that it is those things that we have stood up for that makes us truly who we are as a strong people with a feisty resolve in the world that we have the answer and know what is right and that nobody can bludgeon us into acquiescence or into nothingness and we must feel that way for everybody else too. So no matter where you come from, how much money you have, whether you're my complexion, a little darker, a little lighter, all of us come from Africa. Remember me tell you that. And let us try and understand the responsibility to make sure there is liberation for all our ancestors and our future generations of power to come. So respect, pick up yourself. One love. The reason we say Black Lives Matter is different to the reason that they say all lives matter. When we say Black Lives Matter, we're saying it within a particular context. When they say all lives matter, it is a disrespectful counter argument seeking to remove the significance and relevance of the idea of Black Lives Matter. There are four reasons why. The African Holocaust against African people was the worst ever, most brutal and cruel series and set of crimes against humanity. One, the number of black people who were killed. Conservative estimate by the United Nations, close to 200 million. Two, the duration of the period of time for almost 400 years, when the Jewish Holocaust and World War II lasted barely six years. Three, the psychological, social and spiritual, mental impact and damage that it did to African people and for the intergenerational as well as the intergenerational impact that it had from the people who were enslaved which was carried on to their subsequent generations. Now when you take all of that into context and bear in mind that African people were the only people who were beaten, raped, tortured, enslaved by the millions, we were the only people who were not only whipped, tortured and brutalized, but they would cut open the stomach of the pregnant black woman, whip out the fetus, slam it on the ground, crush it under their boot heel. They would tie our hands and legs to horses and get them to run in four different directions, calling it quartering and drawing. They would bury us in our necks up to our necks in the sand and put honey on our heads and get vicious bees and ants to attack us. They would drown us in the rivers and the lakes with heavy stones around our necks. They would cut off a hand, cut off a limb, use a hot iron to brand us and kill us in the millions under the law because the state of Virginia in the 1600s passed the casual killing act which made it legal for any white person to kill any black person for as long as that black person disobeyed a direct instruction to return to a slave plantation that they were registered on. No other race of people went through this. The loss and robbery of our name, language, religion, culture, morals, folkways, laws and norms are being disconnected and dispossessed from their glorious heritage and then you miseducate a whole people Teach them that they were savage in jungles, barbaric in Africa with no language or civilization. 
And then through that enslavement, even after slavery was over, they continued to lynch and arbitrarily execute us, even if they suspected us of a crime. Then they went on to make all kinds of chemical and biological germ warfare viruses and diseases against us, such as HIV, AIDS, and a number of experiments which killed us by the millions. And then after all of that, we are being beaten and killed, executed by law enforcement officers in the street, from Trayvon Martin to Jordan Davis to Walter Scott to our beloved brother George Floyd. All of those cases, and don't forget in Trinidad and Tobago as well, Kadeem Phillip, Shaquem, you had Nigel Caesar, Shaquille McCoy, 17-year-old Ricardo Muhammad, and Tristan Cobbler. And then after all of those truths, and we say black lives matter, you want to come and say white lives matter to disrespect the lives of those black people? Imagine you have 10 students who are dining around the table to eat and nine of them are served and one is left out. And then the teacher says, but Jeff needs to eat. But the server says they all need to eat. Not only have they disrespected Jeff, but they have totally neglected, rejected, and abandoned his need for equality. So maybe some of us are saying it because we're hoping that the master will hear us and see us as an ally, but black people get conscious. Yes, we know the value of all human life, but no other people in all the annals of history have ever suffered the brutal crimes against humanity that black people have suffered. And if you want to equate that, with the lives of those who were the perpetrators. As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, for every 1,000 years that the white race has been on planet Earth, they have killed 100 million people. And then you will call that racism for me saying it, but you won't even identify it as racism for them doing it. That is how brainwashed we have become. Black Lives Matter. Bye.